Joker here. Hello, Batman. Wanna play fisticuffs? <laughs> oh, oh, who wants to go for some Chinese? Finale Studios. Hello everyone and welcome to Finale Interviews, where we interview interesting people with interesting stories. Today on the roster for you, we have Juan Caballero. You've seen him in the likes of Cat and Mouse, Warning Label, and other projects from A Natural Project. Here he is, the man of many faces, Juan! What was your first experience with performance? My first experience with performance would be, I want to say, high school drama. That is where the actor was born. What initially got you interested in performance? Wow. Uh, I think, as far as I can remember, I loved watching movies. And I would reenact movies that I would watch, from Godzilla movies to horror movies. I mean, I was that little four-year-old running around telling people, they're all gonna laugh at you! They're all gonna laugh at you! Because I saw Carrie when I was a little kid. <laughs> of course, people looked at looked at me like I was like a little off, but, but you know, it, it always brought me joy, reenacting, you know, those films and watching movies and thinking, wow, what would it be like to do that? And that's how I got into it. What aspect do you love most about performance? The ability to tell a story with your voice, with your body, you know, be it's like being part of a of a book with moving pictures. And you're the words on the page, you're the embodiment of those words, those ideas. What has been your favorite project to perform in to date? When I say yes to doing something, it's because I want to do it. And I can't just say one is my favorite because every time it's a chance for me to perform, for me to uh, practice my, um, my skill set. And with every performance, you just get better and better. So I, I don't have a favorite one because I enjoy every one of them. No matter how big or how small the role is, I always bring my A game. Well, what do you have coming up? Uh, any future projects or acting gigs that you can talk about? It was a natu natural project by our friend Nate. It's a fan-made film of Constantine. I'm in it. I am the comedic relief, you can say. It's a small part, but I am involved in it. And went to Comic-Con this year over it. It was on a panel. Very, um, it was a lot of fun. That's all I got to say. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Did you see anyone fun at Comic-Con? I saw, oh, I met John Milos, the legendary uh, writer in Hollywood. If those of you who don't know who John Milos is, let me give you his resume. He wrote Conan the Barbarian, Apocalypse Now, Jaws, Red Dawn, etc. The guy's a living legend, and I met him. He was just sitting at a booth, and I was like, has any performance from any of this films influenced your style, your acting style to this day? Uh, I would say no. Anybody influenced me, you'd be surprised which movies they were. Yeah. You know, the Richard Burton's, uh, um, Owen Olivier, many uh, other. Because when I was a kid, you know, I knew that Sesame Street was on Channel 28, but when you're little, you don't really have a concept of time. You just know that Sesame Street's on Channel 28. So, you know, you think, I want to go watch Sesame Street. So you go, and yes, we had to turn the TV knob. <laughs> and I put Channel 28, and there would be Masterpiece Theater. And I was like, wow, these people talk funny. So I would watch these, I would watch Masterpiece Theater, I, Claudius, and, you know, plays of Shakespearean plays, and, you know, have to talk and talk, and <laughs> God save the Queen, the song. So I hear you could do some impersonations. Well, uh, impersonations, I, I I never really had, I, I wouldn't say like, I wasn't confident in doing it, but <laughs> I was just like, yeah, I can do that or whatever. And when I was working at an amusement park, I met a guy 
it was telling me that he did voiceover work for one of the Batman games as the Joker. And he was doing the voice. And I tried to do the voice. I was like, oh, man, I can't do it. He's like, yes, you can. I'm like, oh. I go, no, I can't. He's like, yes, just do this little phrase over and over until you get it. So I was like, Joker here, Joker here, Joker here. Joker here! Hello, Batman! Wanna play fisticuffs? No! <laughs> oh, oh, who wants to go for some Chinese? <laughs> you know, oh. and yeah, now I can do the Joker. Amazing. And that was, that was, that was something I was like, no, I didn't. Yeah, so just, you know, yeah, a lot of talented people at amusement parks, let me tell you. Absolutely. You know, a guy who can do a dead on Eric Cartman. Really? Which would crack me up because when people would ask him to go where the bathroom is, he'd be like, hey, so just right over there. I can't really do it. A good Eric Cartman. But they would just look at him like, what? Oh, but yeah, that, that. A lot of Beetlejuice. Hey there, Beetlejuice here. <laughs> That's a hard one because he's kind of gravelly. Any advice for any aspiring actors out there? It's not about you. <laughs> it is. It's just, it's just, it's, it really is not about you. It's about the story that's being told, the character that you agree to play, you know, know your limitations and be ready to push those limitations because only practice makes perfect, plain and simple. And sometimes you got to tackle a role or tackle a dialogue that you're not comfortable with. Like, oh my God, this is really long. I got to memorize a lot of just do it if you have the right mindset no matter how much training you had or how little if you have the right mindset and this is what you really want to do you will perform maybe a good performance maybe a bad performance but you know who's going to let you know the director and the director is the boss 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 so you ain't alone there's a difference acting in front of a mirror and having someone say, you know what? Mm, don't wear your hat so much. Okay. Always be ready for input, ready to change. Because in the end, an actor is kind of like a, on a painting. They're just a certain color on a painting. They're the red shade or the blue or the violet, but it's up to the get person putting it together to put those colors together. You got to be in harmony with that and and just do your job. And a little detail about Cat and Mouse, we were just discussing, mm -hmm. you know, who was giving that great advice to aspiring actors. And we were just discussing how, as actors, sometimes we feel that when we look at a final product that we could have done much better. Can you speak on that? Yes, like when we did Cat and Mouse, there's a lengthy amount of dialogue there and uh, watching the performance again, you know, everybody told me that it was, it was good. They liked it. But, you know, as an actor, you're always, you're, you, you really want to do your best. So you look at your performance you're like, mm, I could have done that better. I should have done this. I should have leaned in more, changed the pitch of my voice here and there. And uh, Allie was just telling me she was tired that day. She was overworked in, in real life. But it turns out that her character, too, was also tired and overworked and flustered. And that's why the scene works so well. Exactly. She was over. <laughs> but, but always, you know, you, you will nitpick your performances. You will be like, I can do that better. And that's a good thing, too, because the next time you come in or the next role you do, be the character and perform. <laughs> Juan, you've done that on a number of occasions, so yes. you feel very proud. Well, I, I have I have gotten positive feedback on everyone, so I'm very happy for that. There you go. So, Juan, where can people find you? You can find me uh, in at Nate Lyles. I think is it is it NateLyles.com? Mm -hmm. His natural project. I'll be coming out in his <clears throat> Constantine film.
here's the super serious, very important question. If you had to choose a spirit animal for yourself, what would it be? I would say the wolf. He's loyal, but at the same time, he's ferocious towards that which tries to endanger that circle of community that he has. And also the wolf is beautiful. <laughs> and yeah, I would say the wolf. Because of that, the wolf has like a good, say, family structure, community structure, and it will die if necessary to protect that from harm, from evil. So, yeah, I can relate to the wolf. I am wolf man. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we have one more little surprise. So, if there's anything you want to say to the folks at home, feel free to while I grab something real quick. If you want to be great in life, it comes from within. It's found from within. And then you walk the earth and you live your life. And that's how you achieve greatness. And be nice, be kind to others. Because what goes around, comes around. Come on, everybody! And I promised this man a silly hat, so you can choose whatever you want to wear on the outro. <laughs> oh, I'll wear the camel hat. Yeah! Thank you all so much for watching. We can't wait for the next episode. Bye! Yeehaw! Woo! See you around now. <laughs> nice. Great job, bud. High five. Killed nice. It.